How's it going everyone? This is Than and welcome back to Tidal Gardens. This video is all about corals from the genus Calastria, which are commonly known as trumpet corals or candy cane corals. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to refer to them as candy canes. Let's start first with some general information about candy canes. First off, they are generally considered a very beginner-friendly large polyp stony coral. So for those hobbyists that haven't had a lot of experience with LPS and want to try to dabble in that world, candy canes are a pretty good place to start. The reason they make good beginner corals is mainly threefold. Candy canes are generally hardy. While it's always a good idea to pursue pristine water conditions, these corals give hobbyists some room for error. Every slight dip in calcium or alkalinity is not going to result in a colony crash. Second of all, they are not particularly aggressive compared to other LPS. It's always a good idea to give corals plenty of room to grow, but some LPS require extra space because of their ability to extend sweeper tentacles to kill off their neighbors. Candy canes don't exhibit this behavior to nearly the extent that other LPS do. This gives the aquarium some room to work in terms of aquascaping and coral placement, which comes in really handy in smaller aquariums such as nano reefs. Lastly, they're not going to be drama queens when it comes to lighting. There's some corals out there that are going to go from vibrant and colorful under one set of lights, only to look drab and lifeless under another kind of lights. You know which ones I'm talking about. Candy canes are remarkably consistent in their appearance, so they really don't require extravagant lighting setups, and in the end, they're going to have a very easily maintained aesthetic. Now that we've covered some of the basics of candy canes, let's go over some care tips. Lighting. As I mentioned before, candy cane corals can be kept happy under a variety of lights. If I showed you 10 pictures of the same candy cane grown under 10 different lighting regimens, it would be really difficult to pick out which one was grown under an $800 LED T5 hybrid fixture versus a $20 T5 retrofit. Lighting just does not play that big of a role with this coral. The only thing that I would look out for is overexposure. Here at Tidal Gardens, we keep them under roughly 50 to 75 par, and that seems to be the sweet spot for both growth and color, but I wouldn't overthink it. That leads to my next care tip regarding placement in the tank. Because candy canes do not require as much in the way of lighting, they make a good candidate for placement towards the bottom of the tank. They don't require a lot of crashing flow either. If anything, too much flow can cause the polyps to lose their fleshiness, so I would recommend finding a low flow spot in the tank and just leaving them there. A low flow spot can also help when it comes time to feed. Now I hesitate to say that feeding is required for these corals, but spot feeding two to three times a week can really help spur on growth. As for what to feed candy canes, it's really wide open. Now, typically we feed frozen mysis shrimp and bite-sized pieces of krill. However, you can see in this time lapse that the coral is eating some LPS pellets. When it comes to spot feeding, you will have your best results by turning off the pumps and letting the food settle on the polyps. But you also have to watch out for fish eating the food off of the corals. Worst case scenario that I can share with you, the fish eventually figure out that the corals are full of food, and they can pretty much use them as vending machines later by biting them until they spit it out. One final point before we go is about reproduction and propagation. Candy canes form branching units kind of similar to euphilia, like this frog spawn. Unlike euphilia, that grows buds at the base of the stalk, candy canes replicate by means of longitudinal fission, in layman's terms, that's where a single polyp starts to form two mouths and eventually splits into two separate polyps. You can see this one here forming that distinctive figure eight shape, and then in a couple of weeks will be two separate branches entirely. To propagate these corals, it's a straightforward process to clip the individual branches and glue them down to a plug. To do this cutting, we like to use a bandsaw so that we can get this very flat base that's much easier to glue down. Okay, that does it for candy cane corals. I hope you enjoy and found it helpful. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. 
Now if you hated the video, go ahead and smash that dislike button twice. Until next time, happy reefing.